the Be Gone Doll Care group, we were all close friends, and Judy and Henry and I were original members of that group, Judy Seeger and, and Henry Aguera. What we did was, for something like 25 years or more, we had a single freestanding folk concert that we put together every February. It was originated, in a way, by Eva when she was the dean. It got the name Be Gone Doll Care because she asked Judy Seeger to find some way of relieving the doldrums, the, the dog days of February when it looks as though we're never gonna have spring and we're never gonna have spring break and all of us are working way too hard and everybody's got a cold. Judy, of course, is a person who would rather sing than talk any day and thinks that if you can talk, you can also sing. Judy and her husband, Tony, who is Pete Seeger's nephew, have done a lot of performing and sort of impromptu folk concerts over the years. She started doing it, and she quickly pulled me in. Henry Higuera had been in a, uh, a sort of rock and roll band as a, a kid, and who he is, I think, really... Uh, an almost magisterial authority on the, the entire corpus of the Beatles' work, but knows, knows a lot about other kinds of music, too. Henry was, in a way, the, the theoretician. When we got to be a bigger group, he would write out charts, and we used the, the, the Vietnam-era expression, mission creep, because the, the, the mission got bigger and more complex as we went, and we started to demand more of ourselves. It used to be that we didn't even rehearse. We just kind of decided on a bunch of songs and went in there and sang them and, and got, the, got the whole room singing with us. But it became more rehearsed and more produced as we went along. Being a teacher at St. John's, you are not supposed to be a performer, and there's a kind of wisdom about that. Most good teachers elsewhere are performers. That's what it means to be a good teacher. You put on a show and you dazzle your audience, but if you do that here, then you're obviously talking too much. You've been in class with me. You know that I talk too much in class, but I try hard not to. I try, try to keep the dampers on. So the fact that I am a, a ham, that, I'm, that I like to show off, needs some other outlet, which means that being able to sing in a very amateurish folk group or be able to participate in very amateurish Shakespeare performances was something that I made time for, even though after every play that I was in, I'd have to wait a few years for my family to forgive me before I got in, implicated in another one. I also think it's a form of comradeship of the faculty and students, I, and I hope we're not losing that.